Right. A good right. morning, boys and girls. It takes a moment. I should have done this earlier. Well, I'm hearing a little feedback. Do you have the YouTube stream playing? Okay. Yes. I think. Yeah. If you could mute that, like that would be that would be great. That should solve the problem. All right. How about now? Perfect. Like okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So good morning, boys and girls. Uh, this is Dr. Escobar on our uh, on our second virtual uh, field trip this morning, and we're going to be learning a lot more about uh, JPL and and NASA. And again, it is our good fortune to have Mr. Lyle uh, Tavernier, uh, who is with us uh, to be able to take us on this voyage, if you will. Uh, again, just to give you a, a brief uh, synopsis of his extensive resume, what, what comes to, to mind is his awards, uh, his Emmy Awards, and uh, all of the things that he's done with, uh, with, uh, with the JPL and NASA, and also uh, uh, with his work through Caltech, uh, one of the prestigious uh, uh, science and math in institutions here on, on the West Coast and throughout. Uh, so with that said, uh, Mr. Tavernier, it's all yours. All right, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice to see you all again. Um, for those of you who might have missed out last time, just a kind of a reminder for um, those of us who were here. Um, last week, we talked about engineers and what an engineer is. And just to sort of remind you, an engineer is a person who builds things or fixes things to solve problems. And so today I wanna to talk about some of the kinds of things that we have been building to solve problems at NASA. And so one of the first things that I wanna do is I want to show you a picture. So you should see in just a moment, a picture of Mars on your screen. Now Mars is a very interesting planet and um, this is a close up view of it. It's that nice reddish orange color and if you look up in the sky at night, sometimes you can even see a very small reddish orange light in the sky, which is in fact Mars. You can see it all the way from Earth. It's very, very far away. It's millions of miles away. But scientists are very interested in learning more about Mars. And that's a problem because it's so far away. We can look at it in the night sky. We can point telescopes at it. But to really get a good understanding of the planet, what it's made of, what kinds of rocks are there, we really need to get up close. And we've been able to do that. We have spaceships that go around the planet in space and they can look down and take pictures. Uh, just like we have satellites that go around Earth and look down and take pictures, we can do that on Mars. And, Here's a picture of Mars taken from one of those satellites that's going around the planet. And when we look at it, we think, wow, this is a really interesting looking place. There are these interesting dark areas and light areas. It looks like there are some wavy lines. There's even a little bit of blue mixed in with the gray, which we wouldn't expect thinking about the planet from far away, knowing that we, we see that little orange speck of light in the sky. So we want to go visit Mars and we want to explore it. And that's a problem because it's so far away, millions of miles away, it would take probably two years to go there, explore and come back, which is a really long time to be away from home. So we needed to figure out a way to solve that problem. Lyle? Oh, yeah. Can I, can I interrupt you? I think we're having some technical difficulties here. Uh -oh. I, think, I think some of the teachers have not been able to get in. Uh, let me see. Let me see over here on the YouTube channel. Let's see what's, okay. what, what's going on. Um, it shows, it shows that it's on. Hmm. Um, Can you see how many people are viewing? Does it, does it give you an indication? It just, well, it only says two subscribers. Hmm. Yeah, we had, I had like 14, 15 last time. Yeah. Uh, and I, let me, let me see the screen. Okay. Yeah, the uh, subscribers, I think, are a little bit different from who is watching live, but, um, hmm, I wonder if I'm able to, to look. Yeah, because I'm starting to get some emails here saying, 
What's going on? Right, let me see if I'll, I'll try to look at it too, if I can remember where I put my phone. <laughs> It shows, it shows it there. Hmm, what's going on? One of the emails that I got, it says, I, I can only see you on the link. When I click play, nothing happens. Hmm. I actually was just able to pull it up. I can see it, but I do also see that there are only two people watching, which may okay. be me. The last email that I got, they're telling me it's, it's working now. Oh, it's working now. Okay, great. Because I, I do see it. I don't know if I can, <laughs> if this shows up, but, uh, but, I'm, but I'm seeing us on here. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're good to go. If you want to just give a brief synopsis of the, what you had just introduced. Yeah, thanks. absolutely. So um, hi again. And thanks to everybody who was patient while we were working out our um, technical problems. Sometimes those sorts of things happen. Um, but you're looking at a picture of Mars, one of my favorite planets, and a lot of scientists are interested in exploring Mars and looking close up at it because we see pictures like this taken from space, and we want to be able to go close up, but it's a really difficult place to explore for humans because it's so far away, it's very cold, and everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> There's no air for us to breathe there. So we have to solve that problem. How do you explore? So there's that how question. How do you explore a place that really isn't very welcoming for humans? And one of the ways that we can do that is we can do that by sending robots. And I want you to think about that word robot. I want you to think about this question, what is a robot? Have you ever seen a picture of a robot? Or maybe you have watched a video with a robot? Maybe you've even seen a robot in person, or maybe you even have a robot in your house because some people actually do have robots in their house. So if you've been thinking about what a robot is, maybe you thought of some different things like it is a machine. And so that's one thing that a robot is. Um, and a robot is a machine that does jobs for us and we control it. So I'll give you some examples of some different robots. If you've ever heard of, um, I think they're called a Roomba. It's like a little round robot vacuum cleaner that will ride around on the floor. Um, that's a machine that we control that does a job for us. We can turn it on and off um, and it will clean our floors for us. There are also machines that are, um, they're called robotic arms and they help build cars. And so there are lots of different kinds of robots that are around and able to help us do things. So I want to show you some pictures of some different robots. And this is a picture of a robot that NASA built and sent to the International Space Station. So this robot was orbiting Earth for a little while. Its name was Robonaut. And you can see it has arms, just like we have arms. It has a head, just like we have a head. Um, it even has some legs. Its legs look a little bit different than ours because those robotic legs um, have to be able to help the robot move in space where there's no gravity. Here's another example of a robot. This one looks a little bit different. It doesn't have a head like Robonaut does, but this one, which is called Robo Simeon, does have two eyes up front, so it's kind of like a head. It has two arms, and this robot is actually designed to help rescue people. So it can drive um, a rescue vehicle, it can open doors, it can um, drag people out of buildings if they're in danger. So this is a pretty neat robot. Here's another robot. Uh, this one looks a little bit different. It doesn't have legs. It has treads that can roll around on the ground to help it move, but it does have arms. These arms look a little bit different. 
Here's another view of a robot. You can see it's got legs. This one is using four legs to walk around. It's got two eyes to help it see. So robots have lots of different things that are similar to our senses. And that what's, that's what makes them really good um, at exploring for us. So we've built different robots to explore. This is a robot that we sent to Mars and it's very small. It was only about this big, not much bigger than a microwave. Um, and it was pretty successful. So we wanted to build bigger and better robots. Um, and you can imagine these robots um, that, that look a little bit different. They don't have the legs, they don't have the arms, but they have wheels to drive around. You can see in this picture right here, this robot has two cameras up here that act just like eyes to help us see. And you can't see it, but there's a robotic arm tucked here that folds up and then it comes <laughs> out and can touch the ground. That's my dog, Einstein, come here, buddy. Um, so we built lots of different robots. Here you can see that robotic arm coming out and it can touch the rock. Just like when we go outside and see an interesting rock and we want to pick it up, this robot can't pick it up, but it can touch the rock, it can take pictures of it, it can study the rock for us millions of miles away. So um, let me just, I think I've got one more picture of one. Here is a picture of a robot on Mars. In fact, it has a camera at the end of its arm. And so just like you and I can take a phone and hold it, hold it up here and take a selfie, this robot can take a selfie also. So what I wanna do now is take a break and ask you if you have any questions about robots. Um, if you have questions about Mars, we'll take some of those questions before we talk about how the engineers built the robot. So Dr. Escobar, if any students have any questions that they wanna send in to you, or if you have any questions already, I would be happy to take some of those questions now. All right, yes. Uh, so the first question that we have is, where do ideas for robots come from? Oh, well, that's a really good question. They come from a lot of places. So some robot ideas come from people's brains, which is where they all really come from. But some, sometimes they're just sort of a spark of an idea where somebody goes, hmm, how could I build a robot to solve this problem? And one kind of nice thing that you can do to figure out how to build robots to solve problems is look around at nature. So we have two hands and some fingers that can grab things. So I'll show you this robot back here. You can see it has two hands. It doesn't have five fingers on each hand, but it does have, looks like one, two, two sort of claws that can grip on one side and more on the other side. So it can actually grab onto things. So a lot of times the inspiration or the ideas for robots come from nature. You can look around and um, I've seen a robot that walks like a dog. And so um, you can kind of imagine looking around at different animals to see um, what kind of um, movements animals make and see if robots can make those same movements to get around. Um, so there are lots of different places that we can get ideas for robots. That's a really neat question. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that before. Oh, and Mr. Es uh, Dr. Escobar, I think you might be muted. I can't hear you if you were. So sorry. Um, also, this is one a question to the one we had similarly uh, last week. What do I need to study to become a robot maker? Ah, that's a really good question. So um, there are different ways that you can become um, an engineer who builds robots. And just, I think I probably mentioned this last week, but I'll show you in some pictures and videos later that the people who make the robots, they're not just one person, they're part of a big team. And so there are different people with different jobs who build the robots. And so it sort of depends on what you want to do building the robot. So there is a type of engineer who just builds the pieces. They might um, draw the pieces and design the pieces and maybe even cut them out. There are people who put the robot pieces together. The robots have computers inside of them. So there are people who design the computers, uh, who put the computers together. And then there are people who even write the computer programs to make the, the robot operate the way that it's supposed to operate. So 
the, the skills that those people have and the things that they studied are math. Math is a really, really important skill to have if you want to build robots. So um, right now in kindergarten and first grade, you're learning your math skills. And as you go through elementary school and middle school, you'll keep taking math classes. And when you get into high school, even when you're in middle school, you have a little bit of a choice too. You can start to choose what math classes you take. And I would encourage you to take the most challenging math classes you can. That's really going to help you if you want to have a job as an engineer building robots. That's probably a really good thing you can do while you're in school. You can also just practice building things, um, drawing them, putting them together. Um, those are things you can do as, um, as a, a student in school. Um, some schools have robot teams. Um, for elementary school students, there are, I think it's Lego Robotics. Um, there are teams where you can take pieces that are already built and put them together just like a Lego set, but there's a computer um, and motors and you can actually use computer programming to make the robot do what you want to do. Um, in fact, I've got one. I, I think it's in the other room. I should have had it out for today. Um, it's only about this big, but it has wheels and I can drive it around. And um, if I wanted to, I could probably make a program that would make it grab one of my dog's toys and um, make it play with my dog. Um, when you get into high school, there are other robot programs that you can do. Uh, it's called FIRST Robotics. Um, and then when you go to college, there are programs where you can actually study how to build robots. Um, you can do it as a mechanical engineer. That's one, one way to do it. There's another one. This is a neat word I really like. Um, it's called mechatronics. And mechatronics engineers um, are really good at building these sorts of of things too. So there are different ways to, to build robots. And again, it's a, a really big team effort, but one of the most important things that I would tell you to, to do and practice is math. That's really gonna be helpful. All right, wonderful. And All right, well, oh, let's do one more and then I'll, I'll go on to the next okay. part. And uh, since you had, um, I think this question comes from the fact that you were sharing again a little bit about Mars. Uh, with your opening uh, slide, uh, can you tell us? Can you tell us more about the plans to uh, to get to Mars? Sure. So we're actually sending a robot to Mars. We're going to try to launch it at the end of the month on Ju uh, July 30th. And when we send it to Mars, and I'm going to talk a lot more next week about sending it to Mars. Uh, but it's about an eight-month trip. Um, we put the robot on top of a rocket and send it. Um, and once it gets there, it has to land carefully and it will, on its six wheels, drive around on the planet. So we've designed it to be able to operate and work in, um, on Mars where it's cold and there's no oxygen. Um, so it doesn't need to breathe, which is pretty good. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move forward because I want to talk about our next robot. And this robot is named the Perseverance Rover. And someone asked me, how do these ideas start? Well, somebody has to think of what's the problem we wanna solve, ask those question words, who, what, where, why, when, how, um, and come up with an idea. So here is a, a sketch, a drawing that somebody made very early on of what the robot might look like. And they, they, you can use paper and pencil to draw these sorts of designs. Um, but once you start figuring out some of the more complicated or difficult parts of the, the robot, you've got to build a more complicated technical drawing. And that's what it looks like here. So you can see before we start building it, we know exactly what it's going to look like. We have all the pieces put together um, on a computer model. So not in real life, but um, in a computer, we know what it will look like. We can look at every individual piece. Different teams will design different pieces and put them together and make sure that they work. And then all of those pieces have to be put together. So you can see in this drawing, we've got the wheels down on the bottom to help us move around. It's kind of hard to see because it's tucked up here, but there's a robotic arm that moves just like the other one. Up here is the head of the robot where it has cameras that will allow us to see. And so 
right here is a team of engineers. So remember I said, engineers work together. Lots of them do different jobs. One job of an engineer is to test the robot and make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. So they're testing out the robotic arm here. And I wanna show you a video of what that looks like. So you can see they're checking to make sure that it moves the right way, that it does what it's supposed to do and is able to be put away that it's supposed to do. And look how many people were watching just that one movement of the arm. Let's go back and I wanna play it again. And if we try to count, there's so many people. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different people and someone in the back too looking around. So eight different people looking at this robot to make sure that it's able to move its arm just right. So that's a really important role when we're putting together the robot is making sure that it works the way that it's supposed to. So being able to move the arm is really important, but being able to drive is also really important. Mars isn't a flat, smooth planet. It's got hills, it's got rocks, it's got bumps, it's got sand. So we have to make sure that the robot can go over hills. So here's a picture of the robot. We're testing it out to make sure that it can drive. And if you look in the back, you can see there are some engineers who are making sure that it drives okay, making sure that its wheels turn the way that they're supposed to. So again, we wanna make sure that the robot does what it's supposed to do before we send it on its way. And I have a video of it and you can see just like with the robot arm, as they're testing to see if it can drive, there are lots of engineers who are looking at it, making sure the wheels are turning. I see one, two, three, four, wow, so many, <laughs> I lost count. Um, so you can see that there are lots of engineers who work together to build the robot and make sure that it can do what it's supposed to do. This was pretty exciting. There were lots of people watching from above to see that the robot was able to drive. So while lots of people work on the robot, not everybody gets to put it together. So only a small group of, of engineers put it together and make sure that it works right. This was a pretty exciting day. I remember um, getting to see it drive and that was, that was pretty neat. So we're checking to make sure that it does all the different movements that it's supposed to be able to do. All right, and hopefully we will launch on July 30th. We have a couple weeks where if the weather's bad, um, we, can, we can launch the next day, uh, but we're landing on Mars uh, on February 18th of next year. And this is um, a computer animation or a drawing of what it would look like on Mars with the robot on Mars with its arm out touching the ground. And so with that, I wanna use these last few minutes to take more questions that you might have, uh, questions about the Perseverance rover, questions about Mars or questions about engineering. So Dr. Escobar, do we have any more questions from our students? Yes. Okay. Uh, the next question that we have is, what are the different types of jobs at JPL NASA? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that because we've been talking about engineers but there are so many different kinds of jobs. So engineers, of course, the people who are building these robots and designing them and testing them. We also have scientists. Scientists have questions about how the world works and they conduct experiments to help them understand how the world works and then help us understand. They, they do their experiments and then they share that information with us. Um, in addition to the scientists and the engineers, we have computer programmers. So the computer programmers um, will write computer code to help the robots operate. Um, then we have jobs that people usually don't think about. We have photographers. So somebody has to take pictures of the robots as they're being built. We have people who we, instead of photographers, we call them videographers, uh, and they take the videos that you just watched. So we have teams that do that. Uh, the picture that you see on the screen was created by an artist. We have teams of artists who work at JPL and they create images like this, but they also create really nice pieces of art um, to share with the public and also that are around JPL. So when I walk around at work, I can see some nice things that these artists have put together. We have writers. Um, so when we um, want people to know about what we're doing, uh, we write stories that people can read about. Um, 
We have educators. So I used to be a teacher and we have a small group of teachers who used to, or who work at JPL, but used to be teachers. So there are all sorts of different kinds of jobs. Um, we even have firefighters who work at JPL. We have a fire department. So if there is um, a, a, a fire in a building, the fire department can come from right at JPL. So they don't have to go very far. So there are actually thousands of people who work at JPL. It's like a small city. And so you can imagine different kinds of jobs that you see in a city are also kinds of jobs that we have at JPL. So lots and lots of jobs. Um, so if people are interested in science and space and engineering, but they don't want to be an engineer or a scientist, but they're really interested in it, there's, there's work that you can do at a place like JPL. Um, a lot of people don't know that there are artists who work at JPL. And I think that's pretty neat that we have all those different kinds of jobs at JPL. What a good question. Wonderful, thank you. And our next question uh, is related to uh, the voyage out to Mars. Um, the question is, can students or people see video uh, from Mars? Um, so we can send video from Mars. So the rover has cameras. Right now, there is a rover. I'll go back. I know we were talking about the rover that we're sending to Mars, but there's one that's already there. That's this one named Curiosity. Curiosity has cameras that can take pictures and video. So there have been videos sent back from Mars, but it's not like the video that we're watching right now. You can't just click a button and see a live stream from Mars any time of day. Um, it's, it's video that gets sent back to us and then we have to put it on the internet so that you can watch it. Um, but yes, there are videos that you can, you can watch that are taken from Mars. We have videos of the rover Curiosity when it landed. Uh, which is a pretty neat video. Um, and when we send the next rover, Perseverance, to Mars, you can watch it launch. That will be live. You can actually go right on YouTube and um, watch NASA's YouTube of the launch. So you'll be able to see it take off. And we'll talk more about that next week. Um, and then when we land, there will be, uh, again, a, sh um, a YouTube stream where you can watch uh, the team who is commanding the rover during landing. Um, and monitoring its progress and making sure that everything works the way that it's supposed to. So there are videos, but not like a live stream from Mars right now. Like I can't, I can't go to my computer after this and just watch the scenery on Mars, but I can look at lots of pictures and videos that have already been taken. Got it, very good, wonderful. And our last question for, uh, at least at this point is, are there, are there any Lego-like models of the projects that, that JPL works on? Yes, um, it's, it's interesting you ask that. Um, I wonder if you'll give me just a second, I'll show you one. Um, part, pardon me for having to step away for, for just a moment, but, um, but let, me, let me show you something. Okay, thank you for your patience. Let me turn my video back on. Um, this is actually a, a rover that um, you might recognize it. This is a, a Curiosity rover model and it's got a robotic arm that comes out and moves around. It's got its wheels. So I actually, I like to play with this. I drive it around. I have a little bumpy platform that I drive it over so I can pretend it's on Mars. Um, but there are lots of different Lego kits um, with projects, but I'll be honest, my favorite thing to do with things like Lego bricks is to just have a bunch of them and invent my own sort of thing. Try to make a, a new thing that's never been made before. I think that's really, really fun. Um, but yeah, there are definitely NASA projects that are made into Legos. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have um, any more questions? Or are we out of time? I'm not totally sure. I think we're right up against our time there. Uh, oh, okay. And so I, I don't have any other questions at this point. All right. Well, I want to say thanks again for the opportunity to talk to everybody. And next week we'll, we'll talk more about Mars, but this time, or next time we'll talk about actually the trip to Mars that the rover will take. Uh, excellent. Well, we, we truly enjoyed our, our virtual field trip uh, this morning, Mr. Tavernier. Uh, boys and girls, let, let's give... Uh, 
our presenter a virtual round of applause. We want to thank him so much for taking this time uh, to, to be with us, to uh, help us understand a little bit more about uh, the importance of math. Did you catch that, boys and girls? You know, sometimes, you know, we come up against math and we really, really don't like it. Uh, but he just told us it's really important that we be good mathematicians because you never know. We, we may want to be, you know, the future engineers, uh, the future scientists that'll be having those white suits on and working on those very same projects. So again, th thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tavernier. And we look forward to our third and final uh, field trip uh, next week. My pleasure. Thanks so Bye -bye. much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, boys and girls. All right, I stopped the recording.